And uh, attackers are more interested in cloud data than your network. So yes and no. So this is a double-edged sword. So I hear this in conversations quite a bit. So people say, I don't care about your corporate machines. I just want to get on your cloud and then I want access to all of the data that you're storing in your cloud. But well, I mean, absolutely that is the, the golden goose because that's where everything is stored, financial data, everything, right? But what if you're using a company like um, Salesforce.com who has hopefully a really good security infrastructure and it's very difficult for me as an attacker to get in as one guy to get into Salesforce.com. So I'm thinking about it and I'm like, well, what if I just compromise the guy's machine, which is not a hardened machine because this company doesn't care about security because they have all of their stuff in the cloud. So why would I care about security? Why do I need to spend money on that? That's what I pay Salesforce.com for, right? Ah, but you have an endpoint and you use that endpoint to access that data. Okay, so once you either A, download it to that machine, or B, you log in from that machine, now I can use your machine as a pivot to get in there and get all of your Salesforce data. So that's the kind of stuff we're gonna be talking about, attack vectors, right? And why you need to encrypt your endpoints and why you need to have security on your endpoints and monitoring on your endpoints, whether those people are remote or local or whatever. Traveling salesmen, you know, you need to have the right tools for the right job for your network engineers. Otherwise, a breach is inevitable and you better plan accordingly, right? You better hire a PR firm. You better be ready to go when it happens. And then if it happens, nobody panics. You've got a lockstep response and hey, that's fine. That works. If that works for your company, then that's fine. That's a security program, right? You can do it however you want, but you better be ready to respond, you know, appropriately. If you want to hire quality security engineers, they're not going to work at a company or, you know, this is, I'm talking to the security engineers that are up and coming here. So you may not want to work at a company like that because in the event of a breach, your name will be attached to it. So you better think about that. Um, whenever you go for an interview, you want to interview them as well. What kind of stuff do you have? Oh, you don't have anything? Yeah, that's why we're hiring you. We don't have anything. Come help us secure our network. Well, gee, I just started. I just got my CEH and uh, Timberwolf told me that uh, I don't really know anything yet. So do I, is that a smart thing for me? So you may want to think about that. It might be a good opportunity for you if you think you've got the chops for it. But just make sure that they have a budget and stuff like that, that they're going to spend money on the program, they're going to buy their tools, they're going to give you some stuff that you can play around with and give you some freedom to kind of go and hunt for stuff as well, which means you need a team of people. One guy cannot do all that or one lady cannot do all that, right? So some people say the sheer volume of advanced malware is decreasing. I don't know if that's true. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, maybe the families of it are decreasing, but the actual malware that's out there is getting ever, ever, ever more and more complex and, and uh, just huge in its, in its actual surface of what it does. Even the binaries are getting bigger and bigger. So uh, a lot of times they'll have one little bitty piece of software that will come in and drop all of this stuff on your machine, like rootkits. They're really, really small. They come in and then they bring down all the big stuff that's going to need to be running. Uh, so I don't know that I agree that people say the sheer volume of advanced malware is decreasing. That's probably uh, a farce. Uh, Red, Crit, Red Kit, Neutrino, and other exploit kits struggle for power in the wake of the black hole Arthur arrest. So that's old school. That's not necessarily um, current as of today. What happens in these things is that the source code is released and people go and start doing little twists and bends on this kind of thing. For example, Zeus Kit is out there on GitHub. The Zeus Malware Kit is out there on GitHub. GitHub the 2.8 version is. There are many, many, many later versions that uh, do a lot more advanced things than just what uh, 2.8 did. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stories there which we'll get into later and we'll talk about some of the history of this malware family and stuff. So a minute ago we were talking about the sheer volume of advanced malware is decreasing and I'm like, I don't necessarily agree with that, right? But just remember for the test that that is a that is true, that's a fact. The sheer volume of advanced malware is decreasing for the test, okay? Uh, the next bullet is we want to talk about uh, the mistakes made in offensive security due to an attribution of an attack source. So mistakes are made in offensive security due to misattribution of an attack source. So people are attributing things um, to an offensive attack, but really you're just trying to test your own network, but you got it wrong. You're testing someone else's network. So that's a big problem, right? Um, cyber criminals are targeting the weakest links in the data exchange chain. We talked about that a minute ago. They are actually attack a separate company as a vendor to the primary attack victim, right? So if I can't get directly into the victim, salesforce.com, for example, I'll go either after a user 
or a supplier to salesforce.com. And then they deploy that infected software and now I've got my in, right? I've, I've just gotten my back door. So you as a company, if you're uh, going to be an engineer at salesforce.com and somebody says, hey, here's some software I want you to run uh, as part of an update on that last software I gave you, you better check it, right? You want to check it and make sure there's no back doors in there. So uh, major data destruction attacks are increasing. So there are data destruction attacks. So people are actually destroying data again, which is a rare thing. People are erasing networks and stuff like that, um, data off of networks. Usually they just let it sit there and access it as they need to. So for this last bullet, uh, one of the examples of that is um, uh, like BitLocker. They're encrypting all of your data and then charging you money to try and get it back or they'll erase it. Mm -hmm.